Welcome back. It's still the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa set for our first major conversation. I'm sure you may have heard by now uh, that Nigeria's federal government has uh, presented a certificate of registration to the Congress of Nigeria University Academics, otherwise known as CONWA. Now, Minister of Labor and Employment Chris Singigi, uh, who earlier walked out of a meeting between himself, stakeholders in the education sector, and uh, the ASU members. He presented a certificate to Conwa on Tuesday. Conwa is a breakaway faction of the Academic Staff Union of Universities. Uh, the minister and Gige also presented a certificate of registration to another union, a new union known as the Association of Medical and Dental Academics. That's a, a very interesting one. They're called NAMDA. For short, for short. Now, the development comes amid a strike by the university lecturers under ASU over the demand for increased funding for public universities, a review of lecturers' salaries and allowances, amongst other issues, some of which have been signed as an agreement between the unions and the federal government for some time now. Now, the strike has lasted over seven months and is showing no signs of abating. If the last meeting between the stakeholders in the education sector is concerned. Now, joining us to provide analysis of this is as it affects the ongoing strike by us. So we have uh, Ambrose Igboke. He is a public affairs analyst and he joins us live from the very serene city of Enugu, Nigeria. Ambrose Igboke, good morning and thank you very much for your time. Good, good morning. Thanks for having me here. All right. Um, first of all, is there anything in, in the law, as far as you know, anything in even uh, you know, the practice of how governance and how unions operate that um, says we should have only one union per profession, for instance. Uh, there's no law that says that we should have one union. In fact, there's, uh, the Constitution enshrines uh, uh, freedom of association, and that is what is enshrined in the Constitution. So people are free to join, uh, to form associations, be it professional, be it political, be it ethno religious, be it anything. Uh, so far, it is under the law. So far, it's not a violent group. So far, it's not a terrorist group. Uh, but freedom of, of, of association is a fundamental right of citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So people can always form that. Even the ASU itself, people came together to form it um, so that they can foster the common interests. So uh, that has been what has happened over the years. Um, but this twist is like a, a vendetta rather than you know, a, a common interest. Uh, before people come together because of needs, because of persuasion, because of, um, uh, you know, ability to have a cohesion of uh, their wants and their needs and their, their interests. Uh, but this one, I think, is also an encouragement from the federal government to bring the ranks of uh, ASU. Uh, this is not the first time the federal government is doing this. I remember during the Obasanjo uh, era, uh, during the first uh, hike or protest by the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, uh, the government, you know, brought a law and ensured that uh, they created other uh, associations. So they brought up the Trade Labour Congress, the TLC, I mean Trade Union Congress, the T TUC, and the TUC has been existing uh, side by side with uh, NLC. Uh, this one that I brought, we could see that um, Chris Ngige, Dr. Chris Ngige as a person, as a minister of labor, um, is not doing well uh, in this negotiation. He has, uh, he has shown penchant for uh, intemperate uh, measures in dealing with unions. We saw this when the Joheso strike took place. We saw this when the uh, doctor strike took place. Uh, we see this in our social strike taking place. The same method, the same um, aloofness, uh, the same uh, incapacity to mediate, you know, uh, the same temerity for, uh, I mean, penchant for uh, arrogance. You know, these are the, these are the characteristics that uh, Dr. Chris Ngege has brought to fall as Labour Minister. So it doesn't fit him. Uh, a Labour person should be able to mediate, should be able to negotiate, should be able to know how to represent the federal government and not putting the federal government in a very difficult situation. Uh, um, I'm sure because some of these things are advised from ministers and, and uh, aides that you know you recommend to the federal government. If he has recommended to the federal government to toe the line of peace and toe the line of uh, mediation and negotiation, 
and uh, a kind of concession from both sides. Then this would have been better. Now, this cone one, it's that uh, they think that is a solution to the problem, um, it's laughable because they are the same lecturers. Uh, uh, anybody who is working wants a, a better uh, welfare package, wants a better pay, uh, and wants a better system uh, and a conducive environment for work. So I wonder if uh, this school now will not work in the Nigerian university system. If they are still part of the Nigerian university system, well, it, it's nothing that's going to change. In fact, somebody jocularly said yesterday, that Konwa uh, is uh, part of the language called Aluta Continua. So Konwa Continua. So uh, <laughs> somebody said that uh, <laughs> it, 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 it continues, you know. But what we are saying is you don't duplicate uh, union groups, uh, labor union groups, as a way to run away from facing the realities of demands of, uh, you know, labor unions. You don't do that. And... Uh, I don't know if the federal government does not learn when they created the Trade Union Congress. The fact that uh, strike will not go on again. But today, when before they go on strike, TUC will meet with NLC, and both of them will declare strike. So this type of thing will happen in uh, in the university system if there uh, when there are needs for uh, for you know things better welfare package and demands from the federal uh, from the federal government. Of course, the two unions will come together and uh, you know make demands of the federal government. So instead of dealing with one union, the government is multiplying the numbers of unions it will be dealing with on particular issues. This is a very, very negative way to go. And, uh, and Dr. Chris is just trying to create problems for future labor ministers and trying to create uh, problems for future governments. Would you say that this is another case of divide and rule? I mean, this is a practice that's been going on for a very long time. Uh, would you say that would having another faction, that this is just the case? Uh, this one is not even another faction. Because when you use the word faction, you are talking about people in the same group who are claiming the same name of another of, of the group, having two leadership, for example. Let's say uh, when the labor, uh, NLC had issues of election, where there was a Jero faction, where there was Waba faction. That is why you call use the word faction. So would this, you say that this is around, a case of divide and faction. rule? It's not even a faction. This one is trying to... Um, this place is... This one is a case of insensitivity where a few of the lecturers who are not part of... Uh, who are not part of ASU have been selected. And um, when you see the, the um, spread of membership of this cone one, you see that there are very few. So you are right to say that it's another measure of divide and rule tactics. But this will not work because the same lecturers are dividing. are the same people who are working in the same system. They want better pay. They want a, a better welfare package. They want better funding for research. They want their patents to be seen. They want the town to meet the gown. They want the uh, federal government to um, uh, sponsor the mass production of uh, their patents to fund research and do all that. And those are the things they are asking for, basically. So uh, it, it, unless the, the other union they are creating says they are not working in the Nigerian university system, if they are, the same problem will continue. And they have created an avenue to have multiplicity of unions to deal with. It's a, it's a very sad development. All right. Um, ASU's response to this is to say that um, uh, this particular union is a, a, an unnecessary distraction. And, um, of course, that... Uh, nothing will come out of it. Um, do you expect to suspect that this, this move may um, turn the hand of ASU to, you know, to say, okay, um, let's see how we can, we can uh, come to an agreement with the government and not be too, be too hard you know, in our position, in our stance? Do you suspect that this will, will maybe you know, force the hand of ASU or force ASU and the leadership to take a more softer approach and meet the federal government halfway? Uh, as a citizen of Nigeria, I am very ashamed that my government, the federal government, will you know, reach an agreement with citizens. I will not keep to it. That is the foundation of this problem. When you reach an agreement, or when you have a set of agreements with your citizen, be it in the form of unions, be it as a contract uh, manifesto, uh, be it as a social contract, economic contract with your people, you must limit it. And you are saying there's no money, but you are funding a, a, a lot of uh, extravagance. 
So who will listen to you when you say there's no money? When you have not cut down your own expenses at, 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 uh, at the various public office levels? When you are still funding NMPC with huge sums of money, funding refineries that are not working with huge sums of money, how much is that uh, also asking for? So this thing shows a, a lot of insincerity. Okay, I'm, I'm Rossi, okay, so, sorry to interrupt you, but, but the word I so, believe I was looking for is the inconsequential, as you're describing it as inconsequential. Is this development truly and really totally inconsequential? It is not inconsequential, but I will ag agree with the first word. It's, uh, it's a distraction from the meat of the matter. The meat of the matter is under the agreement you signed with this people since 2009. 2009 to now is 13 years. You have renegotiated that, those uh, agreements. You have set up panels. You have agreed on new terms. You didn't open your own panel's recommendation. You didn't follow them. What kind of government behaves that way? So what we are now saying is that under the agreements that you had with ASO, and then if there are middle ground, if you have issues, Present your body, not arrogantly talking down on, uh, on your intellectual class. I mean, that is the kind of thing. Talking down on intellectual class. Some of those people are professors. Increasingly, is a medical doctor. Some of those are professors of medicine and some others. So when you don't respect your, your intellectual class, then what, can, what class of citizens will you respect? And that is where we have the fundamental issues. The young ones are watching. The young lecturers are watching. There is a brain drain going on now. People are, people are leaving the country. Uh, our our uh, professional cadre, they are living in troops, and then we are comfortable as a country. So what we are saying is that it's a distraction. We are talking about having a speedy conclusion to the negotiations. Also brought a distraction. I mean, the federal government brought a distraction. They went to courts. The court case is still there when they delivered, and then the appeal has been done. We are talking about even saying, pull out this case from the court. Let's finish it on a negotiation table, and then... Uh, a minister for uh, labor came up with this uh, uh, grand uh, distraction. It's a big distraction. So what is Kona going to do? Is Kona going to tell members, how many members do they have across board? He's going to tell them, open the classes, open the university. Even the federal government through the NUC that issued, that gave directive to the vice chancellors to open the universities, how to retract that? Because that is not the way to go. Federal government even recognizes the fact that that is not the way to go. So I don't know if the federal government or the presidency gave uh, Mr. Chris Nige this uh, his blessings to carry out this action. I'm expecting that there should be a, maybe a refutal from the presidency for, the, for this action. Well, so what, what will be the implication, I mean, of this now and having Kona as a union? The implication is the federal government is, has multiplied its, its troubles. <laughs> The federal government has made it, uh, it will start negotiating with many unions in future. That is just the implication. Because the problems are still there. Conwan will come with his problem. The uh, NAMA, or what do they call the new one? The, the NAMDA. Academics. We, NAMDA. We come with his problem. We come with his problem. ASU, we come with his problem. So instead of negotiating just with one union that was taking care of all these uh, shades of interest, we are trying to we will start negotiating with three different unions, and more will come up. So they should be ready to issue more certificates, and that is the, where the problem where you start where you have created. So you, this is you are incubating problems for the future. That is the prop, that is the hydra-headed problem that is being incubated right now. Well, but, but just to solve, I mean, quickly, do do you think that this would actually help solve the problem of getting the students back to the classrooms, and I mean, of course, getting the lecturers to the classroom? No, I don't think this will solve the problem. I only think that this may lead to rebellion. This may lead to internal uh, grandstanding among the lecturers. Now they will have factions among themselves. This one, you have, uh, there will see some lecturers will see the other ones as trouble to us. Some will see the other ones as uh, against us. And then the next thing, they will start having, having internal crisis within the university. And that will even to make it worsen the situation of where there's no agreement on when to go back to class or not. But before, before now, if ASU gives the directive, the, the, the members will respond. Now, you are asking ASU to give directive. Conrad will say they will not respect the directive. When Conrad gives uh, a directive, ASU members will say they will not. And they have created a crisis. That is what it means. So, so uh, uh, the, 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 the chairman of, of, of Conrad, um, before they were even recognized, he was already 
moving around. I mean, this application has been there for some time now, for some years now. The application for them to recognize as a union, uh, they simply went and dusted that file and approved. But um, at the, the sitting of the, the National Industrial Court of Nigeria in Abuja uh, a couple of weeks ago where uh, the, the judge, the vacation judge, made a ruling, you know, ordering Asu to go back to the classroom whilst the, uh, the case is on, you know, citing the Trade Disputes Act. Um, the the corner president was there. At the end of that pronouncement by the judge, he was interviewed by the press, and he says he is in support of the lecturers going back to the classroom. He was in his uniform, complete with a cap, with the inscription corner. So they're already ready. Um, what do you foresee happening if this union now calls its members and says? go back to the classroom. Do you think that uh, a number of lecturers, a, a realistic or sizable number of teachers will return to the classroom to teach? Um, do you think that probably the government will employ new lecturers and fire the ones who have refused to go back to the classroom? I want to talk about this also, uh, um, linking it with the view of President Buhari, who is aware of what is going on, probably has approved it, because he has said that also with their stance, um, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are destroying the investment of government in education, and it's unacceptable what they're doing and how they're going about their, their agitations. Well, uh, I, 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 I keep maintaining that this is a, a chaos. I mean, this is a crisis in the academic system. Uh, Konwa itself, uh, that had been seeking recognition, why was it not recognized before the strike of ASO? That should, goes to show that the federal government did not want to uh, the, the multiplicity of unions in the, the university system. But because now it is convenient for the federal government in its way to spite us and uh, to try to break uh, the uh, you know the strike that has been going on quickly recognize Konwa Konwa that, that have been floating since how many uh, for for years now quickly with a, a, with a fiat quickly so that shows to show that first of all question the sincerity of the federal government on the recognition of uh, uh, Konwa. Uh, having said that, the crisis in the university system has been lingering. Also, strike has been going on for decades. So that means it is a perennial problem. And part of this perennial problem was brought in as, uh, uh, in 2009. So, okay, let's address it in a very uh, you know, general way to ensure that we take care of this problem once and for all, not piecemeal. That was what the 2009 agreement uh, was able to achieve. But what we now uh, see is that the federal government says, okay, the budget is too much. We will fund it 50 billion every, every year for the next five years to be able to, you know, get this done. But it has not been done. I also gave a lot of warning strikes before this thing took place. The federal government ignored them. And these things have been going on. Yes, also has a hard stand, feeling that all the time, all the while, when they were asked to call off strike, they called off strike and nothing happened. Over the years, this thing has been lingering since 2009. So they have been calling on strike, calling on strike. So for them, they think that this is like a final battle. Is uh, let's do it or leave it. And so that is the stand of us on the side. Then the stand of the federal government is like, the other side is that, oh, there is no money. But you are saying there's no money. And you are funding extravagance. So it doesn't tally. The two of them have to come to the table. The, uh, the House of Representatives are, is making efforts to see how they can solve this problem. They have not finished. The committee, various committees set up to make recommendations are doing it. A lot of Nigerians are coming and say, okay, how, what, how do, what do you do to assuage this, uh, this uh, you know, interest of us? And the interests are not, uh, they, they are not uh, personal. They are for the Nigerian university system. So Konwa too. Konwa, I say, if Konwa doesn't, Konwa members, do they have classrooms, enough classrooms? Go to federal universities and state universities and see what their lecturers are suffering. They don't have classrooms. Some of them don't even have offices. They hang around. They come lecture, stay in their car. Some of them borrow offices. There are no, we go to our labs. There's nothing. Some students are having, uh, students undergraduate of computer science. They don't even have basic uh, computer systems to work. We go to our laboratories. Nothing is there. These are the things they're talking about. Where is the funding? You know? So uh, when people think that it's only about our salary, about the lecturer salary, they are, they are missing the point. You uh, go to a lot of HR uh, companies that will tell you that a lot of our uh, graduates are not employable. Why? Because the education system has gone down the drain, especially at the tertiary level. What are we doing about it? These are the issues that ASUL is facing. 
Konwa? Is Konwa okay? Is Konwa uh, members of Konwa are they operating in mass? They are also in the Nigerian uh, tertiary academic system, and they also be be hit by by these things also uh, so, by this deficiency. What, what, what do you foresee happening? To, uh, yeah. What do you foresee happening when they return? Because they have said they are ready to return to work. What do you foresee happening when they go back to the classrooms? Because students are also... You mean, Kona, if yes. Kona, if Kona said that are going back to the classroom, I don't think many parents will release... I will not release my word. Many parents will not release their word for now. Because uh, 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 it's a political thing. And they know it's just trying to break. So until... until because most of the uh, lecturer, Kona just has an infinitesimal number of, uh, uh, of uh, members as lecturers. Majority of the lecturers are in ASU. So if they're open, students will not, uh, parents will not be in a hurry to release their uh, students until they are, they are sure that they have gathered enough members. And this will drag for a while. This will drag for a while. And that is not what is expected. We need a speedy resolution to the matter. And I'm calling on the federal government to rethink this matter and see how they can expeditiously address this issue so that our children can go back to school. But, but uh, just quickly, I mean, a lot of people have uh, thought that, you know, having uh, the private sector in the educational system, I mean, at the end of the day, some people say schooling in Nigeria, the uh, tertiary institution, is, it's, it's so much not expensive. And so uh, let's have, you know, the system entirely privatized. I mean, hands of government. Do you think that that's the solution to all of these issues? No country, no country anywhere in the world does that. Has. The Nigerian government cannot abdicate its responsibilities to its citizens. You don't do that. There are fundamental duties and obligations of the federal government to the Nigerian citizens. And part of it is education. Part of it is health. Part of it is housing, security, food security, physical security, and territorial security. So some of these things are, I try, they are fundamental rights of the citizens, rights to education right to be, uh, to be educated is enshrined in the Constitution. In fact, it's a universal declaration of human rights, part of it. So we should, it is not, uh, the government is not doing the citizens a favor by educating uh, them. It is the responsibility of the government at all levels to educate its citizens. All Therefore, right. saying that uh, uh, it will totally privatize is not agreeable anywhere in the world. All what right, we can uh, say is that federal government, yeah. federal government should encourage private participation by having maybe tax waivers, by encouraging uh, people to say, okay, if you invest in education this way, you catch a tax cut in this. These are, these are the ways you encourage uh, corporate uh, organizations to come into education, and then you, you, they, they can now fund some as critical aspects of education. Ambrose Iboke, okay, we have to go. We, ha we have to go, Ambrose Iboke. Okay. A very interesting analysis from you. We'll see what happens. Um, in this, in this, uh, it's almost the die is cast. <laughs> we'll see what happens going forward. It's a, it makes for an interesting plot. Uh, but thank you so much for your time and for your analysis this morning. Thank, thank you. you very much for having me. All right, all right. Thank you very much. So it's still the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. When we return, we have a, a conversation on World Teachers Day. Uh, today's World Teachers Day. Mercy, I don't know if you would like to switch to becoming a teacher. <laughs> you know, um, it's a noble profession. My parents are teachers. So we'll be right back. Please stay with us. It's still the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. <laughs>